everybody. Hello, Steve here. And today I'm going to start a little bit of talking about this new trike. I'll put the parking brakes on so I don't roll back and forth too much. Yeah, that's better. That locks it in. But anyway, this is a brand new HP Velotechnic Scorpion Enduro. Now, the way the Enduro model differs from the regular Scorpion is the Enduro model is lower geared and the intent was for it to be a, a backcountry uh, bush trike, kind of like in my, tri in my book, Bush Triker, I talk about, about these. And this trike comes with um, Schwalbe Smart Sam 2-inch knobby tires on it. I have changed those out and I have Schwalbe Marathon Plus tires, 1.75 inches, so slightly smaller. And I was, I like fenders. When you're traveling cross country or whatever you're doing, fenders are just nice. So these fenders would not fit with the Schwalbe Smart Sams, the big knobby tires. The tire wouldn't fit in there. And so there's a couple, okay, and why did I put on the Marathon Plus? Well, okay, one reason is clearly that they are the superior tire if you don't like changing flat tires <laughs> or fixing flats or repairing tubes or whatever. I have been running Schwalbe Marathon Plus since 2009 on my long distance tours and I've never had a flat and I've run through nails, tacks, shards of glass, uh, pieces of metal, thousands literally of goat heads and you can, you know, goat heads, uh, they'll flatten most bicycle tires in a heartbeat. <clears throat> Roofing nails, it doesn't matter. These things have this uh, special guard in there and it stops it. And not, so I swapped them out. And see, I'm gonna be riding this on the street for day rides uh, a couple times a week on my 17 mile uh, ride that I do on, on my off days from pumping iron. And so I wanted a tire that uh, it works for the street, obviously. If I take this on a tour, I'll be doing hundreds of miles of pavement, plus my weekly rides, you know, if I put in at least 35 miles a week on, on those, it just makes more sense. The uh, big knobby tires wouldn't be able to run fenders, and of course, they wear quicker than a road tire, which is what this is, a road tire. Um, and a big thing too is that the Schwalbe Smart Sands are, the ones that came on this trike, are, they don't have a high durability and a puncture resistant rating, maybe only 50%, 55%, compared to Marathon Plus, you know, they're right up there at the top, 100%. So, when you're running on knobs, any knobby tires, I used to race motorcycles in the desert, you run on knobs on the pavement, it's not as smooth of a ride, plus the knobs, you, you have what, maybe 60, 70% less surface area on the road, so the surface area that you do have on the, on the ends of those knobs is gonna wear much more quickly than a tire that's made for the road. These tires will still work on fire roads, uh, forest roads, and things like that, and two track, two uh, track trails. Um, obviously, they're not an aggressive tire that would work good in, that would work well in uh, extreme off-road conditions. So I gave up that aspect of what the Enduro, the Scorpion Enduro can do. So I can't do any extreme um, off-roading push striking, backcountry riding, I can't do that. But that's okay. Um, I have to look at what I do the most of, and what I do the most of will be my weekly uh, road rides, and uh, any tours, uh, or if I go up, okay, the, the coast range is 
right next to town here. And so in a matter of just a, a few miles, I mean, we're talking like uh, five miles or less, I can be on um, gravel, dirt, uh, forest roads, um, and that kind of thing, fire roads, and I can get way up in these mountains, and you get on, in these mountains on those kinds of roads, you can go for literally hundreds of miles. The entire, the entire um, length north to south of Oregon, you can stay in these things. And so there's a lot there to explore. You can do a lot of camping in the back country off those roads. And these tires, uh, while not as good as the Smart Sands for traction on really steep stuff, they're good enough. I've ridden the Marathon Plus on dirt roads before, and they do, they do fine. They do fine. So it's just, I've lost the extreme ability with the knobbies, but that's all right, because I'm not gonna use this trike for exclusively uh, off-road stuff. I got the fenders and the, the best tire for durability. No flats, and that's what I like, no flats. <laughs> I don't wanna be changed to flats. Um, so that's the, that's, um, the story on the tires. Now, <clears throat> The Enduro, this trike is lower geared than the standard Scorpion that people would ride just on the street. So it has a gear inch range of 17.3 to 100.6. Now 17, 17.3, that's the low, that, that's the low end of a mountain biking range. If you had a, if you had a regular a three ring crank set up front, and you had it like 22, 32, 42 rings, that would be like having a, a, a 22 up front with a uh, 34 um, large rear cog, 22, 34, and that would give you like in the low 17s, which is basically you can climb trees with that. <laughs> Not literally, but you know, you get the picture. So this has a 17.3. So this is a great climber. <clears throat> now that's good because if I have my panniers loaded on this thing and I'm up in these mountains for a few days or whatever camping and riding, um, it's just easier to pedal. Easier on the knees, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, you don't want to uh, be putting a lot of pressure on the knees and too high of a gear. You want to use those gears. Now the, the top end gear on this trike, the Enduro model, is 100.6. That's, that's pretty decent. Um, that would probably be like having a, a uh, 11 to 34 in the back and a large ring of, I don't know, I'm just guessing, maybe 42 to 46, somewhere in there. So it's not a super high gear. You can't go super fast or, and you can't, basically with that kind of gearing, you have to be content with coasting down steep hills, which is fine with me. Uh, you know, I have at times with my higher gear tracks like my Ice Q, uh, which had a 52 tooth ring in the front, the big one, pedal downhill, you know, to get more speed. But the reality of it is, on a flat road, if you do some study online about gear inch ranges, you will find that a high gear inch range would be like maybe 119, um, and maybe these ex extreme uh, triathlon athletes or the Tour de France, you know, they might have one of, uh, you know, 120 to 125. Basically for the human body, it, the average rider, even a good rider, can't really sustain, I mean, you can't sustain 119 uh, top end gear inch range on flat ground. You can't sustain it. I mean, you can get up and do it, but you can't sustain it. You can't keep doing that if the ground is absolutely level. Um, and I know because I've had, I've gone fast on my Ice Q and my Cat Trike 700, which had a 52 inch ring in the front and a small 24 in the back, both of them. And you can do it, but you can't do it for long periods of time. And even though you're strong and you work out and all this kind of stuff, you can't sustain that. So. What I'm giving up in the gearing here is fine with me because 
I've never had this kind of, this low of a gearing before, and it will allow me to do hills easier by far than ever before. And for me, that's important. You know, um, as I get older, you know, I'm my 71st year of life now, and as you get older, you, you, you're not as strong as you used to be. And so, you know, I hate to admit it, especially if you're into bodybuilding and weightlifting, which I have been for 53 years, um, but it's just the fact of life. Your muscle tissue uh, diminishes over time, your testosterone lowers, and that, that's just a fact of life. So <laughs> from year 71 on, I, I, I'll, I'm sure I'll be content with this. And like I say, if I load up panniers, I don't have them on yet because my rack is still on back order. <laughs> it's June 2021 right now. And uh, you know the cycling industry was hit hard with COVID and so, Manufacturers are scrambling to catch up and fulfill parts orders, so my my rack isn't in yet, but uh, it will be. And once I load that up, I know I'll be appreciative going up hills because I've been on hills on some of my tours, where even with a 24 in the front, a 34 in the back, um, with loaded panniers, you know, I was dying going up some really steep hills on some of these tours, especially along the coast. If you take the Pacific Coast route, it's extremely uh, steep hills in there. And you wouldn't think so because it's along the ocean, but trust me, it's, it's harder than inland routes over the Cascade Range and, uh, and the Sierras. It's, it's just harder. So I'm going to be happy with this gearing as it is. Um, this trike has indirect steering, which if you watched my talk on, on uh, steering, direct versus indirect, you will know that in my opinion, Indirect steering is superior to direct steering, especially if you um, go fast downhills. If you go fast downhills or on a tour. I've toured on both uh, with the direct, comes right out of the kingpin here. You're just going like this and any, any bump, your hands can do like this. This, you can't do that. Once you lock in here, you know, your hand here, your arm against the, the seat, you're not susceptible of that. And at 45, 50, 55 miles an hour, which I've done plenty of, it gets a, a little bit dicey on, on a tricycle, especially on direct steering. So this has the indirect. You notice I pull my hand back, my right hand back to turn right, okay, versus a uh, uh, direct I'd be going like this but anyway so it has indirect steering um, what else do I want to tell you right now it has McPherson strut automobile racing uh, type technology in the front suspension which is superior to anything I've had on my on my two ice trikes well my ice full fat I had full suspension but it was elastomers all the way around and this has much more travel um, this has what I forget 2.3 inches of travel on the front independent suspension um, which I think the ice elastomer is only a little over an inch so this has much more suspension travel on the front than my ice full fat did and it has a, a regular uh, shock absorber in the back and so there's no frame stress on ice trikes you use the elastomers back there for the suspension. The rear swing arm pushes against an elastomer and there's tremendous forces uh, on the frame from that. And I have seen, uh, I know of uh, riders who've had that break on the ice strikes. So I'm glad it has this, uh, this suspension of course costs more. This is a pricey trike. This is a very substantial trike. It's not lightweight. The base weight of this trike is 48 pounds. Definitely heavier than what I've had before. My uh, Cat Tribe 700, it was just under 30 pounds. And so it's not the lightest trike, but for, for an ARV, which is what this is for me, automobile replacement vehicle, ARV. Um, it, it weighs a little more, sure, but that's okay with me. With the low gearing, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, other than the fact that you'd be slower. But for me, I like to get out and enjoy the ride. 
and speed is not uh, just a, an end-all be-all. For a lot of cyclists, especially road racers on regular bicycles, they're always talking about speed. They're just consumed about speed. How fast is it? How fast can you go? I mean, that seems to be a mantra in cycling. You know, it's always like, why? Okay, I enjoy going fast. There's no doubt about it. It's a thrill. But I'm not going to base my entire riding experience on, ooh, how fast can it go? You know, I've known guys that uh, they want the lightest trike they can find to go as fast as they want. You know, so if you want that, then you get a green speed arrow. Okay? It's the fastest trike out there. It doesn't weigh it, hardly anything. It'll beat the pants off of uh, any as far as uh, sustaining high speed. But it's a very limited trike. I don't want a speed trike. I, I want to do more. I want a uh, high utility, functional automobile replacement vehicle because I haven't owned an automobile since um, the late December 2008 when I sold my final vehicle to do my part for the environment. I know it's minuscule, doesn't amount to much, but it's important to me. I like breathing air. Where I live, there's never any pollution. It's just pure ocean air, 24-7, uh, 365. And that's the way I like it, and I don't want to contribute to it. Most people do, but I don't want to do it, and it just feels good in my head, <laughs> for whatever it's worth. But anyway, so yeah, this is a, this is a substantial trike. It's bigger, it's stronger, it's heavier, and it's superior to um, any trike I've had so far. And I intend this on this being my the last trike I buy. It's uh, super comfortable. Um, and, and so far, of course, I haven't been uh, writing it around, but, and I will report on that too. But for right now, I just wanted to give you a brief overview. I got the wrist rest. They took a, a cue from, from Cat Trike. These things are great. You know, before I had these on my ice cue, uh, and I didn't, on the ice cue, I didn't have bar and shifter, so I would just rest my wrist on top. But these, you just set it right there. It's padded. <laughs> it comes, you can replace these little pads. So there's a lot of uh, niceties of this trike, which I will be explaining in the next talk. I'll take you uh, on some close-ups of things and show you what I have done. I like the flag mounting. You might notice that they're not equal lengths or heights, and there's a reason for that. And um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I can say right now. This has 20-inch tires in the front uh, and 26-inch uh, tire in the rear. So the tire in the rear is a little more substantial than my Cat Trike 700 was uh, with the 700C tire, which is basically 28 inch. And that Cat Trike 700 on tour, even with lightly weighted bags, when you ride behind it with the pedal strokes, you can see the rear end of that kind of flexing lateral. So you, you want something substantial in the back if you're, if you're gonna load up some panniers and go for a ride. All right, folks, that's probably about enough talking for right now, and I'll see you in the next talk. See you.